Hello, everybody, and uh, thank you for tuning in to this week's Lender Tip of the Week. I am uh, Matt Wright with Alliance West Mortgage, and uh, today I want to talk about something that uh, Jamie Dimon, CEO of uh, J.P. Morgan Chase Bank, uh, said earlier this week at a conference, basically telling investors to brace themselves uh, and that there is an economic hurricane uh, on the horizon, which is a little scary <clears throat> for someone in a position like that to be sane. Um, so I kind of wanted to dig into you know what he means by that. So. Uh, he noted uh, two main factors um, for you know what's happening and, and what's to come. Uh, that being um, the Federal Reserve and the war in Ukraine. So the Federal Reserve right now is undergoing a you know what he's called a two variable experiment. We are in a uh, interest rate hike cycle, which is the most aggressive rate hike plan in over forty years. Uh, we're seeing short term interest rates, which are the the rate that the Federal Reserve controls, and this is the basically determines what banks can borrow money at. So in a long term, if banks are paying more for money, then they charge it to the consumer. And that just puts a squeeze on everything. So everything will be more expensive. There'll be less borrowing, less growth, et cetera. Uh, so the rate hike cycle, uh, increase cycle, in addition to that, they are reversing its emergency bond buying program or what they call quantitative easing, where they have been buying uh, government treasuries and mortgage mortgages in the billions of dollars for the last couple of years. They have since stopped that and not only stopped it, they're reversing this program. And so now not only they're not buying any, they're also going to start reducing the balance sheet. And so they're going to allow runoff to start, which runoff means that as treasuries mature or as you know mortgages pay off through refinance or sell, they fall off the Federal Reserve's balance sheet. And you know, prior to this week, they were repurchasing new treasuries and new mortgages to fill that balance sheet up to about the $9 trillion mark. So now uh, they're stopping repurchases. And so uh, for to start, this is uh, an amount of $30 billion a month in maturing treasuries and about $18 billion a month in mortgages. And that is going to double starting in September. So major demand for these uh, 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 treasuries and mortgages are leaving the market. And so that is likely to have an effect on mortgage rates, potentially pushing them higher. Um, in addition to that, there's also talk about them selling, and I'm just letting it run off, but selling treasuries and mortgages back to market. Uh, you know, a flood of supply of, of mortgages and treasuries will cause rates to go up even further too. So it's a major, major concern that the effects of this are going to push rates uh, across the board even higher than they are now. Um, and so we don't know what the outcome of this is going to be. This is unprecedented what they're doing. And they are really just walking on eggshells with this because they need to get inflation under control. This is the measures that are going to do that. But the unintended consequences or the direct consequences of this can be drastic. Uh, additionally, the war in Ukraine, this is the worst European conflict since World War II. Um, Russia and Ukraine are major oil, wheat, and corn exporters. This is causing prices on these commodities to go way up. You know, I'm hearing oil pr uh, prices possibly going up to $150, $175 a barrel. Um, this is causing inflation across the globe. So at this point, there's no end of sight to this. You know, Russia, last I checked, uh, is, you know, has a control over about 20% of Ukraine. Um, it doesn't look like they're going to stop until they have taken over the country. And what does that look like in the long run? It are, you know, is the world going to stop, you know, trade completely with Russia for doing this? Um, what is that going to do to oil prices and all these other commodities that they're major exporters of and all the other trade that's involved with this, these, these, uh, these countries? So it's just a huge question mark on what that does. So in, in, in the big scheme of things, what, um, what I think that, you know, what Jamie Dimon is getting at is that the potential result of this is economic recession or potentially a depression. And so I think that we may very well be in a recession right now. And the reason for that is because a recession is defined as two um, quarters of negative GDP growth and Q1 2022 was negative 1.4. So if this quarter is negative again, we're in a recession. And it looked like, you know, based on what we're seeing right now, um, that that is going to be the case. And so that's not necessarily a terrible thing. But it just depends on how deep this goes. So we've seen the stock market sputter. Fortune 500 companies are talking about massive layoffs coming. Um, Fed actions will continue to cause the economy to slow. Uh, unemployment will go up. Uh, and eventually, the inflation will come down because of this. 
Um, we've got two 50 basis point hikes uh, in, in rates coming this month, next week, and again in July. That's pretty much a certainty. And so the financial markets have pretty much baked this in. Um, but you know the different things that come out on a, on a daily basis will determine you know kind of where rates and stock market uh, stock prices go. Uh, so we'll have to see uh, what happens. But these rate hikes are going to put the squeeze on everybody. And so you know there there, there unfortunately is likely going to be uh, some pain to come with these rate hikes. Uh, and the question is how deep of a slowdown we get and how much unemployment there is. Um, and, and you know which leads me into my next. Um, you know, uh, um, point of conversation, which is what does this mean for housing? So we hope that the Federal Reserve is able to get a handle on inflation and eventually they will start lowering rates and rates will come down. Um, it's just a question of when, um, not if. Uh, so eventually mortgage rates will come down. Uh, home prices have done historically really well coming out of recessions or even during some recessions usually because interest rates on mortgages come down and the, and the houses become more affordable. So that's uh, definitely a possible situation here in, I would say, later this year uh, at best. So we've already seen housing start to cool down, um, which was needed. I mean, it was just, it's just been crazy for the last two years and uh, a few years. And so we're seeing uh, housing cool significantly, um, you know, because houses are less affordable, there are, there are less buyers, less offers, inventory is piling up um, so there are more selection and so i'm seeing offers entertained by sellers that i wouldn't even have been looked at in the last few years i mean just discarded and so i think that's a great sign because we're seeing buyers not have to go through the gauntlet of you know competing with a million different buyers you know and they're you know, if you didn't have the the highest down payment and the best credit and you know really the no loan contingency you know no contingencies at all you know, that's kind of phasing out. We're starting to see sellers having to entertain offers that they wouldn't uh, have uh, in the past. And so we're seeing buyers that get pre-approved get into escrows much quicker now um, and, and not, you know, kind of just get so frustrated they don't want to buy anymore. Um, so I think that's that's good uh, to see. And so we've definitely seen a, a transition and the playing field is leveling off between buyers and sellers. We're, you know, kind of shifting to more of a balanced market. Um, and so I, I feel that's a good thing. You know, prices or appreciation is going to slow down. Um, I don't think we're, you know, due for any major, you know, downfall in prices by any means, but um, we should see kind of a, a more even market. And that's, that's nice. Um, as for the future, the effect that the Fed's actions have on interest rate, the economy will provide direction on where the housing market goes. If interest rates on mortgages due to these things that are happening go to you know eight nine ten percent we're going to have some downward pressure on price um, but if, if if things kind of just you know keep kind of where they're at or around these ranges you know we could just see kind of more of the same um, and you know things will you know probably just kind of level out plateau if you will uh, and then eventually as rates come down and hopefully we still continue to see wage growth um, that will make you know the, the markets more affordable, and then we'll start to see things pick up uh, back up once um, you know that that happens. So it, it's going to definitely be a a bumpy road, um, and so you know we'll we'll just have to kind of see how this plays out. Um, but I do think that this this um, you know kind of transition is is very healthy, and you know if, if all things go perfectly, is what the Federal Reserve wants, is what they call a soft landing. You know, we could see rates hover around these levels for a while. You know, maybe I think September is a big month because the Fed will have already done their 250 basis point rate hikes and they may be facing another rate hike or maybe they'll have to reduce rates in September, depending on how things go. Um, so we're going to be keeping a, a real close eye on, on what happens here and I'll be providing updates on, on what we see. So hopefully that sheds a little bit of light on kind of what we're dealing with right now, what to expect over the next few months. And um, any questions or concerns, of course, uh, feel free to reach out. We're here to help. I uh, hope you have a, a great week and I uh, hope to talk soon. Thank you.